for the translation uh, transmission. Can please. you can you post whatever? I will put the solutions up and send it to everybody that I'll provide. How's that? And bring your own Smith charts if you like. I can bring some, but I prefer you print out the ones you you're familiar with and care, and make sure. Yeah, I'm assuming we need like Smith charts, straight edge. Uh, uh, you compass, need a straight edge. Compass. You need a compass, and um, so. Some of you probably already thinking, well, how many problems? I get that a lot. Probably five to six, probably six problems, but it's probably going to be, you know, multiple parts. Just look at the quizzes. That's a, the best indication of what you're going to see in the final. Obviously, there'll be variations. I mean, you're not going to get the same problem, but the same kind of problem, out the way it's crafted and stuff. And there's nothing. I, it's very hard to me for me to believe anybody doesn't see what I'm going to ask, because I, I kind of telegraph it. You do the homework, we do it on the board. Have, has anybody been shocked at anything I asked of him? It should be exactly what you expect. All right, I mean, the problem is maybe they're not the same values, maybe a little different structure, but fundamentals are the same. Always, it's going to just interrogate. Make sure that you know what you should know. And if you do, it's not hard at all. If you don't, a lot of times you get real confused about some of the little things. Did, it, did you have any problems you'd like to do? I gave you some, didn't I? A few. Yeah. Weren't there a few up there? No, I don't think you saw. I don't think you posted no. any from last yeah, class. class. That's all right. I want to do. Um, yeah, you're right. I do have one thing I want you to do. But what were you gonna say? No, no. I, I'm gonna do something with a good conductor. That's one thing I'm gonna do. Go ahead. Um, so a really long time ago, uh, we did. You know, uh, matching impedance matching, yeah. right? And so you had a. Uh, the, Several ways. The, the, um, Instead of using the capacitor or the inductor, we could use a, I forgot what it's called. Transmission line? Yeah, the transmission stub. line, but the, but the, the, the stub like, placed a, in you series. Could, anytime you're doing matching. I remember how to do that. I was just like, can we go over that? But you, and you do all that, right? But then you replace it. The, the, the series, you want to place the stub with a capacitor and inductor. Sure, sure. And that's just, you, anytime you're matching, you're doing one thing. You want to get rid of reflections. Yes. So what does that mean? It means the imaginary part. First, you get the real part of the impedance to be equal to 1, the, the normalized real part. Farm, either the impedance or the minutes, normalized part equal to 1. And then you add something that gets rid of the imaginary stuff. And it could be an inductor, a capacitor, in series or parallel. Or it could be a, sh a stub that's open or shorted in series or parallel. But that's the idea behind it. Now, from that point, you got a problem in mind? No. Nope. I just remembered you said a long time ago, hint, hint, this might be on the final. <laughs> yes, hint, hint, it probably will be on the final. But you, why don't you pick one out? We'll do it. Just come up with a. It doesn't matter. It's just going to be like. But, you know, and then after we do that one, I'm going to do the loss, uh, the good conducting media. and uh, Just well, finish. I would do a problem on the thing that we just finished with. Is yeah. that what you say? Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll go do this one first. Now, basically, today, I'm done with. I, I've, got, I've checked the boxes of all I need to do. And I've taken you through the wave equation, I mean through basically the uh, propagating plane wave and stuff, and phaser form, and you guys, I think, um, are ahead of the curve in terms of knowledge and what you should know. Go ahead. Okay. So design Which one is it? Well, uh, we'll do 2.42. Two, this is probably 2.42 on it. Um, okay, ZL is 70. <coughs> Plus J one ten. So Z L here is seventy plus J one. One ten. One ten ohms. Okay. Uh, fifty ohm line. So Z nine is fifty. Go ahead. Uh, we want to minimize the length of the through line. Of the through line. Yes. All right. So, so this, that'd be D, right? This I'll call it D. Yeah. We want to minimize this. Go ahead. And we want to mat we want to to match this, we want an open shunt stub. Right. So what he's saying is we're gonna connect something that's gonna be this, only it's an open stub, not a short circuit stub. This Fine. is an open circuit right here, okay? Mm -hmm. And we want the link, this is L stub. Oh. We'll we'll replace this with a capacitor, then an inductor, and we'll do it all. Yeah, of course. How much are those? Hundred dollars. Is that an apple or? That's I don't know. From there, right? I see people wearing them all the time walking around my neighborhood. I really like it. Um, I remember the earbuds. I don't like earbuds. They fall in my ear. Uh, my ears are too big. Like the, the, the canals. Yeah. I, I do not. I use. I have these. 
my wife has told me about, which is right. Apple, I mean, they're the I, equivalent to I, the Apple iPhone thing, but they're actually plug-in. And mm -hmm. they stay in my ears okay. I, I really, uh, I think the sound bar is just the best. Okay. Anyway, back to this problem. Now, I'm, we're going to go through this one. We haven't done this kind of stuff in a while. so It's been a while. What yeah. yeah, First, what's that? I did? Well, we're going to do it, but we're going to do more than that. We'll do it. Okay, so first, here's a Smith chart. I hope if you guys got a Smith chart, go ahead and get it out. And, and exactly what I want to draw. You're going to need to help on this one. We're going to have some fun on this one, I think. So here's the one circle, which is the key thing in doing all this. No, I don't. All right. And this is the. Do you have anybody have some of the charts here? Uh, I got a couple I showed there a long time. Okay. All right. So now this is a shot for <laughs> parallel. Does everybody follow me? The minute you see anything in parallel, you go to the oh, admittance no, Everybody with me on that? Right. Can you hear me okay back there? Okay. We're going to the admittance domain. But we start by always getting the normalizing piece. That's the first point always. So ZL normalized is going to be 70 plus J110 over 50, right? And what is that going to be? Uh, 1.4. 1. 1. 1. Plus J2.2. Plus J2.2, right? Yep. All right, now that's ZL. We don't, I'm going to plot that, but we, we're not going to use that. And this is a common mistake, especially for people who are a little rusty with this. Let's see if we got 1.4 or J1.2. J1.2 is somewhere about here. Uh, or 2.2, J2.2, and 1.4 is a circle that's like about here. It's inside the one circle, so this would be ZL. You all follow me on that? That's point one. Now, because it's a short circuit, I'm sorry, open circuit, shunt stuff, parallel, we got to go to the administrator. So call this point one right here. Mm -hmm. Now we draw a line right through here. Can anybody just... Give me the uh, one over that, the YL right here. That's going to be one over ZL. It's going to be something less, than, the real part is less than one, about probably 0.5 to 0.7. Imaginary is minus J about 0.5. It's point. It's point 0.21. 0 0.21 minus J 0.32. Okay. Can you all see that? Roughly, not, I mean, yeah, I mean, make sure, go ahead, take your time. We, we don't, we're in no hurry here. You know, somebody has an app where it's a thing for your iPad stuff, you can draw, it'll draw, it'll bring a Smith chart up, perfect circle, you can do it all very easily on iPads. My wife uses iPads all the time. I thought that's a cool thing. Imagine we can't bring an you iPad to the test. Did somebody in here have that or not? I don't think so. I do. It's cool as heck. Anyway, so that's part two. Now the third thing you need to do, this is not drawn to scale by any means, is make a circle around here. The order is not important, but you have to have a circle, and that circle says of constant reflection coefficient magnitude of the load. You all with the class? Take your time. And if there's any question at all, don't be afraid to ask. I'm a, it's been a while, so you might have. You all with me? Yeah. Everybody. That's right. Now, here's what we need. Out here, we got to get something wavelengths towards generator. We're at the load. We're going to head towards the generator. Make sense, everyone? Mm -hmm. So we're here at the load, and we're going this way. We're going to find this point. But can you give me what that value is? Uh, it's 0 0.448 lambda. All right, that's what I call it a mile marker, because I'm used to thinking in terms of the highway. It's easy if you think that way. You with me, class? Now, I have to move, and I told you the key is, so the real part of either the emittance or impedance is one. So there's two spots. Here is one right here. And give me the value right here. One plus J something. And there's also a point here where it hits which is one minus J something. Go ahead. 
I might as well just give him that. Um, it's gonna be. Oh, I can't see it. I'm glad uh, you guys are doing it. It's gonna be 1.9, I think. Is that right? 1.9? 1 plus J, 1.9. This one will be 1 minus J, 1.9. Right. Yep. All right. Now, after that, I have to figure out how far I move. So if you shoot a line right through here, you're going to see something that's going to be blank wavelengths towards generator. That's a mile marker. And the way you always do it, go from the center of the, of the Smith chart right through the point that intersects the one circle, one plus J, and then read it out here on WTG, wavelengths towards generator. Let's see what you got. Um, for the top one, the plus is going to be uh, 1.86. So this is going to be or 0 0.186. I don't know why 0 0.186 wavelengths towards generator, right? You. Yeah. You got me? Everybody? All right. So now we find the length of this thing right here. I'll call it D. And that's D, the through line. Well, that's going to be where I landed, which is 1.8 or 0. 0.186 minus where I started at 0 0.448 lambda, and obviously that's negative, so we add 0 0.5 to it, and that will be how far we go. And somebody can tell me that. I have a question. This might be a dumb question if you've done it for a while, but Never the distance done. is always from uh, where you end up minus from where you right. start. Just right. Just think about driving on a highway. Yeah, if you yeah. want to know distance, it's where you ended up minus where you started from. If it's a so for rep. these, you always end up on the one circle minus whatever you start. From. Yeah, it, right. that's right. And, and remember, right. we're going cool. wavelengths towards the generator. We're going this way. Just had to make sure. Point two three. Is that the answer? It's a little less than a quarter wavelength. So the, the length here is zero point two three lambda. Okay, it's great in the of a way, but right. Why? So the final's worth 40%? Huh? Final's worth 40%? I don't know. What kind of silver is 35 yeah. or 40? I'm not 30, sure. 30, 30. I think it's 35. 35. I'm no. just checking. Or maybe I think it's, it's 35. You're right. I'm, I'm, just I'm just thinking about what I, what I want to get. <laughs> <laughs> I think the You're doing it the wrong way. way. <laughs> don't, don't it's worth 40%. What you, what you want to do is, I mean, I, people people ask me, what's my grade in the course book? Here's the percentages, all right? Here's how much we did. Here's your grades. Now, I don't know what you're going to make in the future. Yeah. You can forecast what you need to get a certain percent. And there, there will probably be a slight curve, one, one little curve upwards usually on the final exam or on the total grade, one of the two, either the final or the total grade. But I, I, don't, I don't forecast that because until I see what happened, I don't ever say what I, was going to happen there. If I go strict percentage, I'm going to level it. Sometimes it gets a little ugly, a whole lot of Fs. I, don't, I try not to do that. I know there are people who do that, but I try to be more, I guess, willing to agree that it was a little confusing and a problem. All right, anyway, uh, I hope I answered your question. Now, so that's that. Now we've got 1 plus J1.9. You all agree that's the shortest distance? Yes. Now we have to find a stub that's an open circuit stub. Let me just draw another transmitter or another switch right here. So here's another Smith chart. This one's really drawn in a bad way. That's R equal 1. We are using admittances, right? I want to make sure I get this point across. So we're using a stub over here, and what we want is this. We want our stub. This is an open circuit stub. This is an open circuit. And Z naught on this is 50. We're going to use the same piece. You don't have to. You could have an impedance here of 100 ohms. You all with me on that? It doesn't really matter. What bottom, the bottom line is, we need the value looking in here to be a certain value. The exact value we need, if it wasn't 50 ohms, if it was like 100 ohms or something, we would take J1.9, we'd multiply it by 50. That's the actual value of the imaginary part of the impedance. So whatever that is, 50 times that, right? Mm -hmm. Then you would say, well, I want the input impedance of this to be equal to that, unnormalized. And you would use the value of 50 
50 ohms or 100 ohms or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. With me, class? Back to this thing. Now we need this thing. L stop. All right, so if we have an open circuit, what is the impedance of an open circuit class? Infinity. It's infinite. What is the admittance? Normalized? Zero. 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 So we started zero, correct? Mm -hmm. It's been a while to watch this. Make sure you got it. A lot of you do. This is zero. So we start there. We go all the way down to minus. Right on the rim. And where will we go to? Minus J 1.9. And what does it have to be? We have plus J1.9 here, we need minus J1.9. Correct, class? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So minus J1.9 is somewhat down here. If you actually look at the rim, it's uh, minus J1.9 is down here somewhere. Here's J minus J1 straight down, somewhere here. And now you have to go this far. The nice thing is, this starts at zero. So you don't have to subtract the quarter wave, right? So what is that value of? 0.327 is what I got. 0 0.1? That's about right, lambda. So 0 0.327 lambda to make this impedance match. Is that the right answer, by the way? Can anybody check the solutions? Oh, I have no idea. Like, well, I mean, guys. This is a 2.42, yeah. 2.42. Okay, so now what if? I'll go the answer. First, let me confirm. Then I'll answer your question. About, so what if I have to replace that with an inductor transmission line, or what about a transmission line with an inductor capacitor on it? I've answered your question there, but you're going to get this. Give me, give me a second. First, is that right? Can we do the same thing except? Yeah, this point, three, two, eight. All right, now, remember the key to this. We are in the admittance domain, and the key, key thing is, when I look in here, I want Y in, Unnormalized. Y'all with me? Y in to be minus J 1.9 times the characteristic impedance of this line, which is, I mean, this times 50, right here. Yeah, that's right. That's what that's what the input impedance of that is, right? Yes. Now anything else I do, I mean not impedance, admits. Anything else I do has to replicate this as the real admittance. Doesn't matter if it's a capacitor. Doesn't matter if it's a transmission line with an inductor. Go ahead. So, if if you were giving a problem such as this one, would you then give a? What would you be like? Here's the value of the capacitor, the inductor. How about we try find this. the length of the stub? Well, all right. You're saying the stub with an inductor on the end, right? Yeah. All right. Before we do that, let me just do this part. All right. Suppose now I want to. I don't want to change anything about the location or anything like that. I want to replace this stub with an element, all right? Uh, an element in shunt. You all hear me now? Just so what I want to do is this. I'm going to go here. Here's the actual through line, and that is 0 0.23 lambda. Here's my load. I'm just going to call it Z load. We already know what it is. Got the through line, and now I'm saying I want an element here, some element that will match it. Mm -hmm. It's parallel. You hear me? Yes. All right, your choices are either capacitors or inductors. You can't have a resistor because it's lost. Yeah. So now what do you do? Well, this has got a minus J something mm -hmm. admittance, right? Mm -hmm. Admits. Do y'all follow me in this? The admittance of this is minus J, and I'll call it 1.9 times 50. That's it. So we need a conductor. That's the real admittance, right? Forget normalization. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. All right, so what's the admittance of an inductor, or admittance of a capacitor as well? J omega C, isn't it? Yes. That won't work. That's positive. Mm -hmm. So we need admittance of an inductor, which is what? Minus J over omega L. Right, and now, I think you got it, right? Yes. If I give you a frequency, you simply set this equal to that, and you would set minus J over omega L equal to minus J times 1.9 times 50, and you can see right here, the minus J's go away, right? And you find 
that L itself is equal to really what? 1 over 1.9 times 50, right? And it's divided by omega, whatever omega it is. That would be up. Y'all follow me on this? Yes. There's nothing tricky here. I know where you're going, but I'm trying to make sure everybody sees this part. Now, is that a good design? Yes or no, and why? Uh, I would not be fine. What? Would it be okay? Anybody? What's wrong with that? Think of DC. Inductor in parallel. An inductor is a short circuit, right? An inductor in parallel is a horrible choice because you couldn't have any DC biasing if there are transistors trying uh. You with me on that class? So we only want capacitors in parallel and uh, inductors in series. Capacitors in parallel, inductors in series is cool. And if we don't have that, we want to use a we want to use a stub, a shunt. Or we're not quite done. What could we do, Grace? Because you were hinting at this the whole time. We can we can have that shunt stub. Well, you know, I was just just think about this. What if we're hell bent on using a capacitor in parallel? We don't have to use just a capacitor in parallel. Couldn't we do this? Couldn't we say, now we're going to put a capacitor here, all right, with an impedance of, J I mean, an admittance, sorry. Let me do this. An impedance Z of the load here is going to be minus J over omega C, right? Yes. Uh, you know where I'm going. They're going to put an inductor in series. And, well, just look. The only thing I want is what? I want the real impedance of this to be what? It's, I want the sorry, admittance of this. I want the real admittance okay, of this. Okay, so minus one, J1.9 times Minus J1.9 times 50. 50, right? Or whatever the value is, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, let's make it so. We're going to figure out the length I need of this, because this is what you're really asking about, right? Mm -hmm, I'll yes. just call it L1. This is fictitious. You all with me, class? All right, so that's the impedance, right? Mm -hmm. And omega and C are givens. Well, yeah, I mean, we could, see, if you mess around with the value of C here, right, then what you're doing is you're given two possibilities. You have length and C, or yep. length and, yep. then you get, uh, you get really um, a trajectory of, you get an infinite number so of values. either we would get length or C and we'd find the other. Yes. Okay. Fine. It doesn't have to be C, it could be L. Either one, you can do this problem. Okay, yes, yes. All right, so that's the actual means, right? What's the actual admittance? One over that. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So the actual admittance, why, why, well, actually, why don't I do it this way? I go from here, and I get normalized impedance. Hopefully you'll see it, which is going to be minus J over omega C times Z naught, right? Do you agree with that? Now I'm going to get the normalized admittance. I'm going to erase this. I think you're going to see this. That's impedance. I'm, I'm, I really don't need to do this. Admittance is going to be 1 over that. So now I have J omega C Z naught. And that's my normalized admittance, right? Now I want that normalized admittance to be what? I mean, that's the normalized admittance, correct? Yes. I don't know where this is, but it's somewhere. If I give you omega, you can figure it out. You all agree? So it's somewhere. Where is it? Somewhere on this rim, <coughs> but it's positive J, so it's somewhere up here. Let's just call this right here J omega C Z naught. And I don't know where it is. Okay. Now how far do I have to go? You have to go until I get it minus J 1.9. Do you all agree with this? All the way around the circle. Then I have to go from here and I have to go to the point where it's here. That makes sense. That should make sense, yes. And, and the real key is this. Any time you're trying to do this, there's two possibilities of how you're going to match it, either series or parallel. Mm -hmm. If they're series, you stay in the impedance domain. If you're parallel, you do it in the admittance domain. And the only thing you want to do is get rid of the imaginary part when the real part is one of either the admittance or the impedance. That's it. Make sense? You got a part of the question here or no? Okay. Um, I, have a, I have a question, just theoretical. Um, when you multiply by like Z naught or divide by C naught, what is, what's the difference between admittance and impedance for that? Well, if you think about it, 
if you got a loaded fetus, right? So you have like J. Then if you divide by Z naught, that's small ZL, right? Mm -hmm. What's what is the load normalized load admittance? It's one over ZL, isn't it? One over impedance is admittance, right? That's normalized. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Well, if you if you want Y else, one over that. This is normalized admittance, right? Yeah. One over that is Y. Well, that's Z naught over Z L, right? Yeah. They're flipping. That's it. Okay. That's it. If you like, if you have like a, a plus like J one point four in admittance, that you would put it set that equal to uh, J omega L times Z naught. Uh, hold it. You're saying stuff that is partial information. You said you got an admittance. If you got like or a, a conduct is an impedance or admittance. Um, I'm just throwing it. Well, I mean, it, it, it very much depends because admittance is the admittance of a capacitor is J and C. The inductor, the impedance of a capacitor is one over J and C. Mm -hmm. So it becomes critical what we're talking about. So go ahead, tell me now. So if it's a uh, Let's say admittance, and it's like J 1.4, then you would equate uh, that actual to Actual admittance? Yeah. All right, so we got an admittance J 1.4, go ahead. And would you just set that equal to J omega L? Or? Well, for, I don't know. if this is an admittance, an inductor has an admittance equal to minus J, does it? The impedance of an inductor Do you is, flip the sign then? Or? Yeah, I mean, look. If, 1 over J, maybe you can see this. J itself is really 1 at an angle of 90 degrees, all right? Mm -hmm. 1 over J is really minus J, or it's equal to 1 at an angle of minus 90 degrees. Okay? So if you got an impedance, say J50 ohms, an inductor, mm -hmm. the admittance of that is minus J over 50. Minus J over 50. Okay. The admittance of that, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this is just one over in peace. Okay, that makes sense. Did that? Sorry, I think I was confusing myself there. Admittance and impedance are related, they're inverse. Normalization, I just stick to the impedance page. Take the characteristic impedance of the line and divide it into the actual impedance of the ZL, of the load, to get the normalized admittance. That's the way to go. All right, you got another one for me? No, I'm little. Aiden, you good? Jackson, you got anything, any question, John? All right, let me do this impedance business. Uh, I want to do one, one of these things. I'm even going to telegraph this. I'm going to give you a problem that has to do with a good conductor and propagation and stuff like that. All right, now, now you know what's coming. So, so you like the one. So like power flow pointing vector or more well, like? Well, more to the point of. Or more of find, uh, having, having our E field and finding the H field. We're going to using the probably something like that, but let's go ahead and do it. How's that? Of course. Sure. Let me show you a problem. Take a look at that section on good conductors in the book for a second. It's in chapter six. In chapter six. I hope this helped you. Right? It did. One thing I realized, um, when I smell food, my appetite's triggered. I usually fast until 3 o'clock or so before uh, I smell that thing, man, it's like, oh. You want a cookie? No, I don't eat sugar. <laughs> Thank you. Once, no, just hang on to me. One and six in the back. I'm going to take the problem out of that. Uh, uh, propagation conductor, sorry. And all right. Hold on. Yeah, let's try 23 and 20. We'll go 23 first. Or maybe we'll go 22 because it's circle. Did, is that my book or your book? This is mine. I bought it used. All right, let's try 22. So this is problem 622, and then we'll do 23 if it's needed. All right. This one doesn't have the e to the alpha component. That's all right. Okay. 
So there's a semi-infinite slab that exists for z greater than zero. Okay. So here's z, here's zero. We got a slab. Go ahead. Uh, sigma is the conductivity is 300. Sigma here is 300. Okay. Um, our epsilon relative is 10.2. That's a big epsilon relative is 10.2. Our mu relative is one. Okay. Mu relative is not magnetic. Okay. And the E field at the surface Z equals zero. Here it is. Is one cosine pi times ten to the sixth T. So it's one cosine pi times ten to the sixth T. Okay. Oh, in the AX direction. Right. AX direction, that's volts per meter. Yep. And this is the E field at z equals zero in time. Go with me. And it wants us to find the instantaneous E and instantaneous H. We're going to do this one first. Let everybody copy it down and get it. really appreciate the problem. Here's what he's giving you. He's saying that's what the electric field right is the surface is. It's time bearing phenomena. The wave is propagating this way. It's propagating in that direction, the positive z. He doesn't give you enough background to really appreciate this, other than the fact that it's in the section on plane wave propagation. So this isn't like a one-off where he hasn't given you enough information. He's assuming the wave is propagating that way. How do we know it's propagating in the direction? Because it's the only wave can go. <laughs> it's positive C, right? Because the y direction would be... Yeah. Well, no, no. It can only propagate in the z direction. The E field... Well, you know, you say that <laughs> in truth, Yes, but if it was y direction propagation, he'd give you some information about the constraint on that. Here, he did it on purpose. It's propagating the z direction. That's the way his whole book's written. Okay. So here's what happens when we have a field propagating in the z direction. What you get is this. You get. I'll put it right here. You get e. Uh, it's marker in business. Uh, so this guy, this marker, is seeing better days. And. So what happens is you get an E field itself. Now, just think about this. This is going to be, I'm going to do the phasor and the vector, or, and the uh, time domain form. So first, for the time domain form, this is going to be some E naught, right? E to the minus alpha Z times cosine of omega T, positive Z propagation minus beta Z, Possibly plus a phase angle here, but I'm going to, I don't need a phase angle. The reason is I don't see a phase angle here. See this here? This is the argument. This is, that thing's going to become this right here. So if z is zero, beta z is zero, and there's no phase angle there, so I don't need to worry about phase angle. So I have this in the a x direction. Now I just wrote down what the phase, I mean, what the time domain form of that is. Do you all with me? Yes. Can you see it back there? All right, what's the phase or domain? Why I'm at it? Some people messed up the phase or form of the E field. They wrote it down with a cosine. Phaser doesn't have any any omega t variation. Phaser assumes that and gets rid of it. So this is going to have a value of E naught, right? It's going to be e to the minus alpha z, but it's also going to be e to the minus j beta z because that's the direction of propagation. A x. Okay. Everybody with me? That's vector phase. Correct, everyone? Yes. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yep. Next, I, I just by inspection, just look here. What is omega? Pi times to the sixth. Yeah. So we know omega right off the bat. By looking, we know omega is equal to pi times 10 to the 6th, right? Radians per second. We also, by looking at, we know what E naught is, don't we? One. Yes. Look at the coefficient, it's one, right? Now, we know the frequency. Now we're going to get beta. We're actually going to get a couple of things. So we know, in general, that gamma, work with me on this, guys, is equal to the square root of j omega mu times sigma plus j omega epsilon. Y'all agree with that? Yep. You got a calculator, people? I want you to do uh, some. 
Uh, I plugged it in already. It's 24.33 for both. Yeah, because it's a very good conductor. <laughs> but how do you know it's a good conductor, anyone? The test to see if it's a good conductor is what? Sigma, Sigma is big. has to be much, much greater than omega epsilon, right? I'm going to let you write. Catch it. You with me on this one? Why is that so? Because if it's a good conductor, this has to be much greater than that. Because these, this term is the coefficient of E in the curl of H equation. If you look at curl of H, you actually get what? Sigma E plus J omega epsilon E are the co two things. That's real current, that's imaginary, or it's displacement current, current density, right? So if this dominates, or if sigma is much, much greater than omega epsilon, it's a good conductor. So what's sigma again? 300, right? Let's see what that is relative to omega epsilon. What's omega epsilon? 2.84. Well, let me do it this way. Times 10 to the minus. It's, 10, um, it's pi times 10 to the 6 times epsilon, which is epsilon naught, right? Mm -hmm. Epsilon naught times epsilon relative, which is, what, 10.2? So what do you get for this value? Again, Grayson, you were about to Oh, tell. it's 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 two two point eight four times ten to the minus fourth. So it's very two very small. Two something times ten to the minus fourth. It is non-existent. It is a very good conductor. You all with me? Are you with me, conductor guys? You got yeah, that? Yeah. Good conductor. Good conductor. That means alpha and beta are the same. As a matter of fact, you can always use this formula. But this is going to be what? Square root of pi f mu sigma. Grayson's ahead of me. 1 plus j is the propagation constant. And what's that value? Uh, uh, it now? It's 20. They're both 24.33. 24.33. 3, and it's 1 plus j. So alpha is beta, and now we have alpha and beta. Do you agree, class? So we're almost. Now we're there, basically. That field, this is the time-varying form, would become 1 e to the minus, I'm just going to leave it as alpha z, because we know. Cosine here, I'm going to leave it as omega, because omega we know. Minus, and we know beta, same thing as alpha z, ax. And we can write the phasor form, but we've got both of them. Now what else does it ask for? Uh, we, we, so that's the instantaneous E. We need instantaneous H now. All right, how do you get H? Um, Let's go to the phase of it. What's, yeah. the, what's the instantaneous E? It's, it's, it's just that. Instantaneous that, means time dimension. It's just that based off. But we just plug in yeah, yeah, you just plug alpha, alpha and beta. And they're about 24.33. Okay. Is that the right answer? I, I'm certain it is. But you, you follow me on this? Cool. I'll just. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. The instantaneous just means time dimension. That's all it is. Because you can tell at any instant time what it is, if you know location. All right, now, after that, we want the H field. I'm going to recommend you do it this way. To get the H field, we need eta. We need the intrinsic impedance. Please be attentive here. This is the place people mess up. You all agree with this? A lot of people took wavelength, I think in the last quiz, to be C over F. That's only true if it's a vacuum or if it's free space. It's velocity, phase velocity over F if it's lossless. You all with me? And really, it's omega over beta. That's the way to get velocity, phase velocity. Back to this thing. So here, <laughs> it's interesting. All right, I have the E field. You all agree I have the E field. Now, I need eta. How do I get eta, the intrinsic impedance? Class, don't forget this one. I won't give this to you. How do we get it? People? J omega mu square root of J omega mu over sigma plus J, J omega. omega mu over sigma plus J omega epsilon. What it is is the coefficient of of really um, H in the um, Michael Faraday's law of induction and divided by the coefficient of E in Ampere's law. Magnitude. So this is going to be what? It's a good conductor, correct, class? Right? Does that mean that sigma dominates? So this, this is just sigma. I mean, sigma is much greater than mega epsilon. Just leave it as sigma. It's really what? J times square root of omega mu. It's actually square root of J. 
over sigma, and you can put this at e to the j pi over 4 if you want. Now I'm going to mention y in a second. Why don't you write that down? I want to make sure you see this part. Are you with me? Yes. Hear me on this one. Now I look at this. My first thing, make sure, I'll make sure you can see this. Hey, when I look at this, I know it's a good conductor, so get rid of that. Right? That's point one. With me? I got rid of it because sigma is much greater than omega epsilon, right? Now, next thing I look at is j. I have the square root of j. Do you all remember me talking about that? Yes. j is 1 at an angle of 90 degrees, or e to the j, 90 degrees, or e to the j pi over 2, the square root of that is just this, e to the j pi over 4. You with me? Aiden? What? Are you? No, I'm good, yeah. You good with this, John? OK. That's the impedance. What is our impedance? Well, it's really some a to naught e to the j pi over 4. And if you like, it's a to naught e to the j 45 degrees, if you want to put things in degrees. Now we need a to naught. What is the square root of omega mu over sigma? It's small. Anybody? Wait. Omega is da, 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 da. Oh, I 5 times 10 to the 6, right? Mu is just mu naught, 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, divided by sigma, which is 300. It's going to be on the other ohms, I think, or tens of ohms. Mm -hmm. Got it. Anybody? I, oh, I got, I got point zero eight one one two. Is that right, guys? Okay. 0 0.8 0 0.08112. Point 0.08112. Right. Let's see. Omega is 5 times 10 to the 6, right? No, that's not right. You got 0.115. You got 0.115 e to the j45. Just look at this, all right? Mu relative is 1. So we got omega is pi times 10 to the 6 times mu naught. That's 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, right? So we got pi times 10 to 6 times pi, square root of that pi comes out in front. Then you got 10 to minus 6, or okay, 10 I got 0. 0.115, yeah, yeah. Is that what he says? Yes. Yep, that's what he says. 0.115. So I have a question. Go ahead. I, I computed it first without, without, without changing mu to, or eta to that, keeping eta in its original form. That and is I the do. original. I'm, well, okay. With, with, yeah. Then you messed up somewhere. You probably did this uh, when you put the J omega in here. I'm guessing now. Huh? All right, the J omega epsilon, right? Yeah. Epsilon is 10.2 times 8.854 times 10 to the uh, minus 12 times omega, which is pi times 10 to the uh, 6. That's going to be of the order of 10 to the minus 4th, I think you said, right? Yep. This is 300. 300 plus 10 to the minus 4th, anything, is about 300. Doesn't matter if it's got a J in it. Ah, no, I know what I did. Uh, my, I had mine in rectangular, not polar. Both my components were. Oh, real and imaginary part? Yeah, I had a real and imaginary part instead of that. Yeah, square root of two difference. Yeah. Anyway, is that the impedance then? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's what I got. So, how do you get H? Uh, I'm going to finish my thought over here. I know how not to get H. Don't guess. <laughs> On this, I'll see. And, and you know, I understand why. They probably messed up and they just, well, oh, hey, just put something down. I gotta get a few points. All right, now that's the phase of form of E. You all agree with this? Right here? I can put the values in, but we've got them right. Don't we, class? Right? Yeah. So, how do you get H? It's a plain way of propagating. H is equal to 1. 1 over eta. Please be attentive here. People mess this up. And then it's going to be what? Unit vector and directional propagation crossed into E. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to make sure. Do you all agree that that's, there's two forms of this curl business that reduce to simply cross products. For the E field nature for propagating plane waves, it's easy. Now over here, what happens? Well, I've got 1 over eta. Eta has a magnitude of eta naught, right? 
It's got a phase angle. I'm going to leave the phase angle down. E to the J, and I'll use 45 degrees because you guys probably are more careful or you're comfortable with that. We know J, or we know 8 itself is 1.15, don't we? And then it's unit vector in the direction of propagation. What is it, guys? It's a A Z. Can everybody follow me on that? It has yep. to be Z because that's what it said in the problem. It's propagating in the Z direction. It's got to be Z, right? A Z. What else? I mean, that's A Z. It's, just it's cross. crossed into what? E naught. E or, or not E naught. Yeah, yeah. E, e, e naught times what? You're right, though. E to the what? Minus. Alpha Z, E to the minus J, beta Z, right? Yes. In the AX direction, this is the phase of form. What is it going to become? Well, the magnitude will be E naught over A to naught, right? Yes. E naught over A to naught. That's a magnitude. Next, I've got, really, I'm going to do it this way. I have E to the minus alpha z. That's going to be the same in both, right? Yep. Now I have this. E to the j45 up top is e to the minus, minus j45. j45. Right. And so what I'm going to do is put this e to the minus j, and this is going to be beta z. Technically, this should be in radians because beta is in radians. You all follow me? And when yes. we're spoke, he'll, he'll, he'll sometimes put 45 in, in, in Dave Irwin's book. He would do. 45 degrees there and, and try to get a time domain equation. It makes no sense because this should be that. Now, when you come up, it's minus. There's a minus there, so this can actually be plus pi over 4. You with me? Why it's plus? Because that's j down there becomes minus j pi over 4, 45 degrees, right? Minus j, there's a minus j there, so I put minus j and I can add those two. And then I have this. Finally, I have AZ crossed AX is a one. Can anybody follow me on that? A one. Now that's the phasor domain form of the H field. I didn't put in the value of E naught and A naught there, but we're going to get it. You all agree with that? Yep. How do you get the time domain form? Uh, Just everything in the J goes to a cosine. Yeah, we take E to the J mega T times this and take the real part, but at the end of the day, what we know, you're going to get a magnitude. So the instantaneous form of this, or h of z comma t, it's going to be this magnitude. Can just somebody take one over? Um, eight point seven. What is it? Eight point seven. Eight point seven. Point seven, and it's going to be e to the. Just leave this minus alpha z, and then this cosine of omega t. Minus beta z, right? Yep. Minus pi over 4. Correct? A y. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A y. You're right. I'm good with that. Yeah. Is that the answer? Okay. Let's see. Uh, I think so. Amazing, so by the way, I did put it Okay, y'all see? Yeah. That's a really good problem because it, it highlights what you need to know. How to get the characteristic impedance, how to get the propagation constant. And I'm not going to ask you power flow, but if I did ask you power flow, how would you get the power flow? Uh, it'd be one half the real of, of e, e cross, cross h, h conjugate. But what does it always square. boil down to? E naught squared over two. I'm not going to read that. One half E naught squared, that's the magnitude of the E field squared, over the magnitude of eta times E to the minus two alpha Z times cosine of the phase angle of eta, which is 45 degrees. And you just said you're not going to ask that. I know, but I just <laughs> repeated the fact that you were trying to do it and you got tired of reading something off your notepad. It's a long equation. <laughs> God, it's a horrible thing to think about. Oh, oh Friday. It's not Friday. It's not yeah, Friday. It, it feels like Friday. It's because the last day of class. Tell you, today, I didn't, I thought I got enough sleep. My dog got me at 5 o'clock, 5.30 to go out. Man, I, she never used to do that. I don't know what, she's trying to get me back for something. But anyway, I, I never really did get back to sleep. So I, mean, I like to get seven to eight hours of sleep when you get five or something like this, life is just not as good as it could be. I'll probably take a nap when I'm going this class. <laughs> I don't know if you guys like naps, but 
Oh, of course. But I can tell you one thing. You know, most of you are probably trying to figure out, well, how do I retain the most information? How do I study? How, what would make me most intelligent all this stuff? There's a military that's good that done kajillions of experiments on this. A guy named Andrew Huberman on YouTube uh, is a guy, he's an ophthalmologist and uh, a brain and neuroscientist professor out at Stanford. He has all these podcasts. And one of the single, I mean, the best thing you can do is exercise. People don't, can't believe it. But cardiovascular exercise, hard, hard pumping, with some weight training, does more for your brain almost saying it's scary that that would do it. You'd think it'd be like drugs or something. The second thing is naps. If you need a nap, take a nap. You'll never regret it if you don't go more than about an hour. If you go, like, there's a point where you can go into deep sleep and then you'll have a hard time waking up, but naps are sick. And then they'll just ruin your sleep schedule. Huh? Yeah, and they'll, then it'll just ruin your sleep schedule. Yeah, and he's very much, he talks about all the benefits now. Um, the military's got a whole bunch of other tricks and um, this breathing stuff that they have where they do it's box breathing, if you know. Has anybody ever heard of this stuff? Special forces do this, you know about it. Yeah, you're an athlete, you probably know a lot more than me about this. There's all these tricks and the trick is one thing. They want to get you to be as mentally sharp and capable of making decisions as you've ever been. And one of the worst things is actually fear. When your adrenaline level and neuroadrenaline goes up, the blood comes out of the brain centers that it needs to be in so that you can make rational decisions. You go into a flight or like really fight or flight response, and then you have what's called stage fright. You couldn't remember your brother's name half the time if that happens. And they teach you how to prevent that by box breathing and all these other tricks. So anyway, I'll stop there. Are you with me on this one? All right, question, more questions. We're almost done. We've got 15 minutes, I think. Maybe 16, 17. I'll stay as long as you need me to. You got other questions? We, you do? Now, we haven't done anything on capacity and inductance uh, for a while. You all know that I'm going to give you a problem that's going to ask you the capacity and inductance of something. And I don't know what that something what is. Mean, like, wait, I, I remember when we got, when we, when we had like a uh, sphere, a sphere, and we got the capacitance and resistance. I do not remember giving me inductance. Inductance was inductance gauge. Inductance was gauge. Zero. <laughs> oh, okay. But that's you, a was, cylinder is uh, different, uh, right? A cylinder, you could. Ah, uh, through maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. You yeah. get the resistance too from the inner to so the outer. So you get resistance, capacitance, and inductance from a cylinder. That sounds like a good problem. And you know, you can get what <laughs> inductance of the toroid. <laughs> no, I'm thinking about like <laughs> not a toroid. No, no. We did the inductance of the toroid. We're assuming it's a good magnetic circuit, right? We wrap it with turns. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. We make it the e we make it really easy for the magnetic circuit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're right. No, but we can't do that with a cylinder. We can bend it into a toroid. Can you find the inductance by bending <laughs> that into a toroid and making the magnetic circuit? Oh, that's exactly what we did, actually. Yeah. We oh, did. that's actually really okay. Never mind. Now I'm beginning to remember things, <laughs> and I had tried. I didn't think of what you will. Most of the stuff I'm going to give you is right on. I mean, it's problems related to things you've done. I'm not going to give you crazy things. I'm not going to give you a pretzel and say, find the inductance. <laughs> so, so if I can do all the homework, I'll be fine. Well, that depends if you can understand the concepts. Yeah. You won't need memorizing things. Memorizing homework solutions is the worst single thing no, you can no, waste. No, no, no. But like if, uh, if you study, understand the concepts, you should be good. I like, to, I like to read over my notes and then rework the homework to see if I understand it. Let me tell you, I've had people literally go, we go through problems, and they remember the answer for a problem. So I give them another problem. So basically, very similar in terms of the details and stuff. I structure the problem. They don't, no work, here's an answer. I remember that answer from home. But the geometry changes, sigma changes. You have to know how to do it. You yeah, can't know just, but, but that's the answer. Yeah, she might get something for that, yeah. You're going to get a, a request not to do that. But anyway, I think this class is pretty good overall. You, you, some of, uh, I'd say, of those that came, <laughs> we're missing a few. I, I think you, you're fairly serious. You wouldn't be here and you, you came. And I do appreciate you coming. Now, how about, you want one 
one or two more problems. Just tell me which one. Honestly, I could go on about this, but I think you know what's happening again. I'll give you the. I'm gonna give you the formulas. I'll give you mu not. Give you epsilon not. That was a Go ahead. Fine. Can you please? No, no. This is not about. This is not an actual question. Like, like for you mm -hmm. to work. This is more of. Can when you get that equation sheet? Can you post from the window? So I can oh, know, yeah, yeah. know what to expect. And I'm going to send to everybody that. I'm going to okay. send you yes. that. Yeah, yes. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll post on one note and I'll send you by email. That way it's in your face kind of deal. That's good. That's what I want. But I don't, you know, I'll give you a Z, you know, that is input impedance to the transmission line. You know that one? Zn mm -hmm. is equal to Z0 times ZL plus J. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That one I'll give you because that takes some time. Um, I don't think there's any other ones I need to give you because most of it is just, it's, there's nothing tricky after that point in terms of, if you're working familiar, you know J is sigma E, you know E is epsilon, D is epsilon, epsilon, I mean, so you know the E is what, D over epsilon, you know all that, right? If, if, but if, if you ever think, if you're ever thinking that, should I add this equation, should I not, the answer is always you should add it. I thank you. That's really helpful. <laughs> of course. But I never had those thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I had those thoughts. I got one kid in my first class. Michael. Oh, yeah, he's... Man, the dude is a lawyer at heart. He's always trying to... Could you do this? You wouldn't ask this. Uh, can we make our own equation sheet? No. <laughs> well, that'd be a good idea. I think we should. I think you can make all the equations. You can't use them if you make them. Okay. <laughs> Actually, that's what I usually do. Uh, yeah, first step, the first step, I'm in an equation sheet, and I'm like, I gotta know these, and I know that, like, I know the theory, I know these equations, I can do it. That's how you study. You study, yeah, that's, that's you, you can study however you want. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I think we're gonna level with you. If you don't know what they mean, it doesn't matter how many equations you memorize. Uh, you have to know how they're applied. Of course. But a lot of people. But that's Tanya. I see these little crib sheets before a test. They're trying to remember. It's got to remember again. You don't know how to use it. The, the equations are the first thing we're gonna forget though. Like, like I, I can understand the theory, but like, and like, but it's nothing if I can't apply it to the equation. At least yeah, in, in terms of the test. All right, so curl of E, right? Curl of E is minus dBdt. Great equation. Okay, I'll give you an E field. Tell me what B is. Here's where, uh, let's draw right here. They'll put that down. I must get, no, you gotta do the curl of E find B, right? I mean, Couldn't I, huh? could I just go through the phaser domain? And yeah, that yeah, set? but you got to know that. The problem is, I'm pro I'm, if it's not propagating, you can't. I, there's, pe there's things that people, anytime I see these formula sheets, it bugs me because they've got tremendous faith that this will get them through. They'll get some partial credit. That's a dangerous thing because when you get a formula sheet to make up yourself, there's no partial credit. Then there's not. That's the way it always has been, and it's, at least for me. It's the, you can have one if you want, but you get zero partial credit and the problems get harder. I don't think most people want that. I don't want that. I don't either. I had, I had a kind of Dale Grimes, brilliant physicist that was the department chair, and he'd give you a choice in class if, if you want. He wouldn't even provide it. If you want formulas, the problems get a lot harder. And there's no partial credit jump. If you don't, problems are more fundamental, and you might get some partial credit. Now, people will at times, well, I want formulas because it's advanced in that. Then they'll weep because <laughs> physicists can come up with problems that are right out of the pit, man. I mean, those things are just infinite sums, fine. The minimum number of terms to get this level of accuracy and all this—it's like, oh god, why? I I don't do that. I just I don't give a choice. I tell you right now, I'll give you any formula you need, and I'll do it before, but no formula cards. And it, honestly, my tests are never—they never reflect the formula themselves. They're any complicated. I'll give you the one about the end. Is the test for sure on Thursday at noon? The test is at Thursday at noon because of the unanimous consent by the students in the class. And okay. then Dr. Nelms agreed. Yes, and so I that, sent that to everybody. Yeah, I, I got the email saying he tell from him telling you that it was okay. So yes, that's what it is. To I, Chase was here, right? Mm -hmm. I'll send that out again. Grayson, send me an email to remind everybody it's at noon. Okay. Right. 
I, I don't have my. I just want to make 100 percent sure that that's what it is. Yeah, because that'd be really bad. I to see, miss that. Okay, I see Zach over at the student center working out. I see uh, Sam, the guy with the bad leg. He's working out over there. I see a few other of my students working out at the student center. You don't know this, but doing that kind of exercise, cardiovascular exercise and weightlifting, does more for your brain than you could ever imagine. I would have never guess that, but. Long ago, I mean, I tell you this much: they're, they're finding out stuff that the, the guy, the one scientist, is doing their stuff. I think it was Kyle Gillette. This is a very these are brilliant scientists. I think he's a medical doctor too. But they found out the single thing that uh, enhances memory and your mental function, your ability to reason, is exercise. Cardiovascular exercise. Mm. It's heart pounding. I thought, you gotta be kidding me. That's what it all points to. And he thought it would be fish oil, he thought it'd be something else that helps, you know, you know, that was it, which blew me away. And, but the, long ago there was a guy named Bobby Fisher, who's a chess guy, and he somehow knew about that because he would work out when he was fighting. I mean, most of these guys smoke like fiends and they didn't work out anyway. He would work out, run, do all this other stuff, wasn't a smoker or anything like that. And he seemed to get better and better and better at the time playing chess. Anyway, nobody booked it. Thought, they thought he was nuts doing that, but I So I'm going to tell you all that. Half the time, I'm shocked by what they're finding about the brain-body connection. You, pro you, might not, you might know some of this stuff, actually, because uh, you're an athlete, but I was shocked at that. I did realize one thing, some of the best students I've ever had in my life were swimmers. They were like long distance swimmers and stuff, I used to work cross country people. And I, it's just probably an anomaly, but it blew me away. How can, you know, athletics take a lot of time. Swimmers, they're there really early. I mean, how do you do that? But there's something about that in the brain that helps. They're very disciplined. Too. Anyway, you got any more problems for me? I'm just sitting down because I'm lazy right now. But you got some more? Just ask away and we'll do it. I think I'm, I, I will be prepared after I prepare myself. You can ask, yes, yeah, send me, do, do me a favor. If you, you want to, um, yes, I'll, any questions you have, I'm gonna respond to everybody in the class by email, okay? That way everybody will be in the loop, even Chase. Andrew Strickland did drop. Okay. The other guy, I don't know. I mean, there's two others that I, there's nothing in any case drop on my roll yet. Unless, it, can you drop that? No, I have a 26. I have huh? no idea. It a 26. So they can't drop. Good. Well, maybe not good. Anyway. Yeah, I think that'd be bad. <laughs> not good for them. For them, yeah. All right, today the weather is good. Tomorrow the weather is good. Anything else? Now, you guys got a lot of courses. Huh? Two. How many? Three? One, just one. No.